Here's a reminder of the backdrop to what we're dealing with when it comes to the attacks on Barclays Bank. Run the, run the river to the sea! Palestine will be free! Run the river to the sea! Palestine will be free! This, of course, uh, that's a taster, an hors d'oeuvre, if you like, to what then happened. Pro-Palestinian activists say they've attacked 30, 20 Barclays Bank branches across England and Scotland as part of a campaign aimed at damaging Israel's war machine. Ella, I mean, look, you know, protests over the years have taken many forms. You know, we all understand the King's Horse and the Suffragettes. And, you know, I get it. Sometimes it's meant to look bad. Uh, but this sounds like almost an act of terrorism that's going on at the moment. Well, what Barclays has been... Tarks, as one of my colleagues in the office of the Academy of Ideas here just reminded me, Barclays has <laughs> suffered um, this kind of direct action or whatever you want to call it for years now. I mean, they were in particularly in relation to South Africa um, in previous years. That, so they're, as a company, kind of used to it. Um, but I think the main takeaway that I get from this is that direct action like this is only ever really successful and not sort of just considered wanton criminal damage when you have a mass kind of backing behind it. Mm. And the, you know, the problem with the um, groups like Palestine Action, don't capture the sort of complexity of the, of the, of the Middle East um, conflict and the debates that are going on in normal households at the moment, which is that the vast majority of people feel very strongly about the, evil of what happened in the pogrom the 7th of October. But they are also, myself included, horrified by the death in Gaza and, you know, uh, don't, don't really know what a good solution would be to all of mm. this. Want the hostages returned, but don't want civilians, kids dying through the sort of attempts to get those hostages back. So it's a complicated issue. Um, and I just don't see why anybody would think smashing up Barclays would address that kind of complicated political issue. I mean, <laughs> and I would imagine whether even, I mean, on they... a very small point, I mean, it's so hard to get into a bank these days. It's really not going to win favour smashing up the few that are left open. Well, people. that's very true. Yeah, Silly it's point. amazing they found twenty branches of anything, frankly. Uh, but uh, you know, what one could sensibly argue if you leave, you know, fairly nefarious protests unchecked, and that was a central allegation against those around in those almost weekly protests that they, they kind of got a free pass when there was a, a very real belief from many that a, an equivalent protest using inflammatory language and terminology and slogans and, and, and chants, etc., would never have been allowed. This was allowed, and that's almost legitimised where we're at now. I mean, we can argue forever that the, the truth of that, but that's certainly a feeling. But I guess with Barclays, um, you know, I've seen people say this about other banks. Is, is the accusation yeah, then, that if you've got any kind of connection, if your bank has in any way financed something that might be Israeli, therefore you are up for a lashing? Yeah, well, that's, I mean, the fundamental flaw at the heart of BDS for me has always been that, you know, it's not, it's not a, it's not targeted. It's just any, anything Israeli and actually increasingly anyone Israeli and anyone Jewish. We've seen on lots of these yep. protests, um, the words Zionist and Jewish being used interchangeably. I mean, the whole argument for lots of anti-Israel um, protesters has been there's a difference between Zionism and, and Jews. Um, and that difference, that distinction has disappeared and yeah. lots of these um marches which is which me which is anti-semitic and we know that that's anti-semitic yeah. um in relation to the kind of the boycott movement i think that the you know obviously barclays has said well it's not that we're directly involved in funding ammunition for example it's, all, it's a bit all a bit more complicated than that um but the idea that you are attacking israel's war machine by busting through a window in a barclays bank in um, I don't know, Birmingham is ridiculous. Um, yeah. And what you, if you really do want to have a, you know, a, a national discussion about what the UK's foreign policy should be or something like that, then it has to be a sort of relatively democratic mass movement, which to be. Oh, and Ella's line has frozen um, on that moment. You're back with us, Ella. You, you froze up for a second. Apologies, I'm, my, I'm, I'm obviously one of the most technically illiterate journalists out there. I don't there, think so. it's you. I think it's just some sort of <laughs> Wi-Fi swine but the, the, the main point i wanted to make was 
the the government the, these protests have been big there's been some ex sections of them that have been pretty hairy and anti-semitic mm. there's been lots of sections of them that are fairly normal and instead of just policing them properly having a, a clear stance on violence criminal sought to bring in new laws yeah. and and clamp down on freedom of speech and that has led to further outbursts i mean whose fault the barclays thing is obviously palestine action we need to be much clearer at using the law against criminal damage where it's necessary yep. and supporting freedom of and defending freedom Fair of point. speech where it's necessary uh